Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Body Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Jessica Alexandria, and for those of you that are old friends and family to me and the YouTube channel, welcome back. I felt so called to sit, to pour tea, to connect, to vibe with you, and talk about the magic of the winter solstice, what we, which we are currently celebrating here in the Northern Hemisphere. It's interesting too, because before today, I was getting a lot of downloads, messages, and my own meditation, things that I wanted to apply to my own life, that I felt very called to apply to my own life, as well as messages that I knew that I was going to inevitably come here and share them with you. And a lot of it has interwoven itself into, again, the symbolism and the magic of the winter solstice. So I don't believe that it's too late, even though I'm recording this, the day of the winter solstice. I believe that everything happens with perfect divine timing. And for that reason, I'm just gonna trust the process. In the meantime, feel free to get yourself a hot cup of tea. Feel free to sip along with me some coffee, some water, get cozy, and let's go ahead and dive right in. So yes, as I was saying, we are gonna be talking about the winter solstice tonight or today. And I'm hoping that the lighting doesn't change, but that's one of the beauties of the winter solstice is that the days get shorter and the nights get longer. Let's just go ahead and dive right into the symbolism of that. Now the winter solstice is so powerful because it represents in the greater scheme of things how much like how little we know of the world around us and how this is what it means to me by the way how little we know and understand of the world around us and how much within that it's so important for we for us to go into our internal world our subconscious our intuition and it moves in alignment too with what is happening in nature with animals kind of going into hibernation mode that is what we are called individually to do as well. Now for animals or in the natural animal kingdom, animals retreat into their caves and they retreat into their, their sacred places or their quiet places to find comfort and to live off of the fat that was built up over the entirety of the year until that moment. As human beings, we're on a spiritual realm, we are, going to be living off of the knowledge of what it is that we understand that is that we know and this is our time to kind of like process to spend time with the divine to spend time with our intuition our higher selves and even exploring the shadow aspects of our own realities in our own inner worlds so that we can when the season changes and the time comes we can re-emerge more powerful in our awareness and this goes deeper than just super, like not superficial knowledge and awareness, but it goes deeper than what we understand about the world, like our, our knowledge of the world. A lot of times this reflects in our knowledge of what's going on in our lives, our path, our purpose, what's happening in our relationships, how we better take care of ourselves. And it's so important when we are looking into the realms and diving to the realms of the shadow and the light aspects of ourselves that we are practicing the balance of those two things. Now, this is the winter, this, the winter solstice, right? It's not the autumn equinox. So we are not in perfect balance here. We're not in this perfect harmony. If anything, this is the time where we tip into our shadow. We tip into our dark. And that can be very triggering for a lot of people because what does the dark represent? It can represent our internal fears, the things that we don't know, our subconscious. It makes us find our, it, it's, a, it's situations that we find ourselves having to trust our intuition more than our logical side, which is what the light represents in the spiritual realms. So are you someone who can find comfort in the unknown are you someone who can find comfort in you know not being able to understand or rationalize or logicalize if that's even a word what is going what is happening now and what will happen next the winter solstice is the time spiritually where we are not leaning into our knowledge of again what 
is happening around us, within us, in the world, in our future, in the past, in the present, we are now leaning more into quiet reflection, quiet reflection and quiet connection to nature herself. So goddess, goddess energy or earth energy, spiritual energies, all of the elements actually. And inviting the presence of the divine, our angels and our guides and our higher selves into our lives while we're reflecting in this cave or this cocoon. Now, that leads me to the next part of the magic of the winter solstice. It represents a lot of reflection. Now, we are in the Northern hem Hemisphere entering into the next year, right? We're starting to get into the realms where we're celebrating a new year. And I don't want us to pay so much attention to a fresh start and a new beginning because from an astrologer's perspective, and I'm an astrologer for those of you guys that don't know, um, for many of us, unless your solar return is happening around the same start of the new year, this isn't going to necessarily reflect a total fresh start, a new beginning, even if you're setting intention for it. Can it happen? Is it possible? Yes. But is it always energetically aligned? No. So with the winter solstice, even though many of us are preparing for the start of the new year, or all of us, I guess, are preparing for the start of the new year, 2024, or whenever it is that you're watching this now, it's more important that we are reflecting on that which we understand what has happened. And we're not reflecting to, again, understand it, to make it make sense, to make it fit, because that's not natural, right? There's so many things that happen within the 365 days of our lives or the season in our lives that maybe it's there's no reasoning that we can quickly come to terms with within a year that doesn't seem natural and as spiritual beings it's so important that we learn to vibe with our natural instincts instead of fight and force force them into different directions so instead of us trying to go into the light again as far as when we're reflecting back on the last few uh the whole year or the last few seasons of our life, instead of looking at them, reflecting at them and trying to make them that make sense, this is a time where it's a, it's a safe place for us to process our emotion, to feel our emotion and bring those emotions, those feelings to our altar spaces, to the divine, to our angels and our guides, to our higher selves, to come to terms and to come to peace, to find peace with it. Not again, this is not to rationalize, to make it make sense, to understand it, because that would be us trying to run back into the light aspect when the winter solstice is about being more comfortable with the darkness and the unknown and the, the shadow aspects of our reality. And I'll have a video about that um, coming forward. It was a meditation, a message that came to me in my meditation while I was outside taking care of the chickens, as you guys know. Um, that's just like my prime time for just downloads. It just like, it's very fast. It's because I'm very earth, a lot of earth in me. And when I go out in earth and I'm moving around in earth, it gets all of the energies just kind of flowing. I just constantly and like downloading. So let me know down in the comments if you're ready for that message. I, I'm pretty sure I'm ready to start sharing. But with the shadow aspect, we don't necessarily, and I know that this is common where People want to celebrate, you know, the light triumphing over the darkness, but at least for right now, it's us being able to find the benefit and the good and the shadow aspect within ourselves. And it's the quiet parts of our mind, the intuitive parts of our mind, the feminine aspects of our mind, where we are more kind of like nourishing ourselves, supporting ourselves spiritually, emotionally, physically, and becoming more inspired and calling in protection while we are wrapped in our cocoon space again during the winter solstice now with the word cocoon that brings me to the third part of the winter solstice that is that i actually want to dive into and this has a lot to do with community connection and even release now in nature when we sit with nature long enough we'll see that she is very simple we see that she doesn't ask for much she doesn't require much and in all of that so much is provided for her and she gave so much back to us. And that's something that we can take as in inspiration in our own relationships and even our relationship with ourselves. 
when the winter solstice comes, it's not always about in aggressive, I don't want to say aggressive, but con a concentration on family gatherings and coming together of the great community. Because again, every one of us have different realities. We have different family situations. We have different community makeups. Every Everything is different, right? It's nice to have a round, a round circle of people that you can trust and warmth in the home and the environment. That's beautiful. That is a huge blessing. And then there's others who the winter solstice or your life looks like a bit more of a lone wolf type of energy. And for now, your journey is more one of self-exploration or expo exploration by the self alone. So with that, it's so important, regardless of where it is that you fit into those realms, whether you are with a large community or riding solo, I think I want to kind of encourage us and get us excited to go to a space of simplicity within relationships, within community, and with the relationship that is that we have with ourselves. The winter solstice starts to thin and cut back a lot um, when it comes to resources, because if we are expending ourselves and our energy in too many different things that are not replenishing us or contributing, it can be a threat to our survival. Now, back in the day when we lived in caves or when we lived in huts, when we lived in yurts, wherever our background is, survival looked like pretty, pretty specific. It looked like how we could actually eat and live and keep the fire going, you know. But in today's times, in modern time, in modern day, modern day times, survival is going to look like energetic survival. And even though we live in a, in many societies right now that seem to be highly functioning on the external, are we really functioning and are we really healthy on the internal? It can seem like we're producing, producing, producing a lot or are churning a lot or consuming a lot, but in all of that, are we actually okay? That's something to really sit with and to even reflect upon. All these things that I'm doing, all this work that I'm churning out, all this effort that I'm putting out, is it exhaustive? Is it contributing to not just my bills, but to my my life, my livelihood, my sense of purpose, my sense of satisfaction, my joy, or is it eating away at my mental, my emotional, my energetic well being? And you know, what is the cost? You know, what is it? What is the cost? Especially when we spend so much time in our work. So with the winter solstice kind of highlighting our relationships and community, this is the time to essentially kind of cut back on all the many things that it is that we are pouring ourselves into. And if you find that the winter solstice during this time, the season is kind of reflecting into you that how you're spending this time or who you're spending this time with seems like it's doing more harm than good, or if it's not um, healthy and supportive of you, then this is a wonderful time for you to um, begin to thin out and to cut away, to remove, or to begin to call into your life, the connections, the support, the friendships, the feelings, the activities, the vibes that are going to help you to sustain to sustain you help you to thrive help you to feel nourished and that's my next point because we are just blasting through these points right now i'm surprised i'm doing so well especially with mercury retrograde for those of you guys that don't know i'm a virgo virgo moon virgo mars and virgo sun so when mercury goes retrograde which i was born under a retrograde mercury i tend to kind of um trip over my words, but it also makes me very reflective. So maybe that's what's going on right here. What, uh, how does Mercury retrograde normally vibe with you? I think it's always a blessing, but I've got videos about that too. I'll probably link one of them down below, but moving forward, it's leading me to my next point, which I just forgot. Hmm, there it is. It's the space cadet just kind of reemerging. Um, my next point is well, I don't remember what my next point is. I'm going to move on to one of my other points that is I definitely want to talk to you about uh, renewal and rebirth with the winter solstice. And that can be like, when you think about it, you're just like, are we sure that the winter solstice represents the renewal and rebirth? But it does. 
because it's in this dormancy, which is not very dormant, it's very active, this quiet time, this cocooning, this reflective time, this shadow, this shadow realm time where we're exploring, it is not necessarily the most physically active, but it is the more intuitively, energetically, energetically, spiritually, and emotionally restorative. And there's a lot of growth that happens there. There's a lot that we are able to see and, and understand, like, this is what I love. This is what is not he healthy for me. This is where I'm not thriving. This is what I need. This is what I don't need. All of those things, we're feeling them out. We're not rushing through this process. We're taking our time through this process. It is inspiring us. It is, it, it's deeply inspiring our action steps. It's deeply inspiring our life. And this is why we don't want to rush out of this. We're not necessarily cocooned and, and isolated away from the world unless you choose that. We, however you choose this time, it's very, it's, it's very much, um, beneficial for f the forward for the for the future and in that when right before this season is done and before the spring comes you have had because you've taken the time enough time to kind of process and interact with your intuition and ask those questions and build the build the relationship and build the communication again with your angels and your guides and your higher self and clear out the lines of communication once again or reconnect through communication what is my life to look like? What happens next? What do I want? What have, what was awakened within me? And from that, we have been reborn. From that, we re-enter and we're renewed. There's a new sense of life. There's a new sense of release and freedom. With that, I'm going to leave you with this, right? The winter solstice is a beautiful time if we're open to it of finding tremendous sense of peace through the blessing of reflection and if you are open to it you will use this time to connect to your in intuition to connect with the divine to connect with your higher self and the moves that you were making that were mindless before things that you may have got it's a part of the habit it's a part of the ritual it's something that's expected of you that you just do these are things that they you understand why you're doing them they have sorry i had to change my lighting a little bit here you understand why you're doing them and they are divinely inspired they are fueling your steps they are rewarding they are fulfilling they are it's something that you can sustain because you got rid of, you cut away from because you were inspired to, you were led to release and let go the things that just didn't, aren't conducive, that they're not um, adding any value into your life or they need to be placed away. You know, just like we fold away our winter clothes or our summer clothes and we start taking out our winter clothes and vice versa. There are certain aspects of our life that maybe we don't say goodbye to ever forever but for right now we tuck them away because we're focusing now on what on meaning and sometimes something that really helps with that is going to a place of simplicity less is more because again you go further you can go further along your journey you can go further in your life if the right people are around you and you're not carrying a ton of burden and baggage on your mind body soul spirit so this winter solstice, I just really am calling out for a blessing for you for peace. That is the biggest thing I think I've even learned in my own personal journey. I used to set very high standards, standards and expectations for myself. And that was beautiful, especially in my 20s. Um, and now in my maidenhood, you know, now I'm entering into my motherhood season of my life. And then fingers crossed, we make it to the crone stage. And I'll talk to you guys about that when the time comes, or maybe in Sacred Circle Tarot School, where we dive into all of those energies, and that will be linked down below. But I learned a lot about, um, you know, the, in this season of my life, like what is the most important thing to me right now? And what would I give back to my maiden self going back into history? If I could go back and tell her anything or give her anything, what would I give? And I think a main thing is um, 
you know, peace and that time for extra time to kind of stay in that shadow self, like that shadow aspect inspired that is very similar to the winter solstice and to really take that time more seriously and to not rush through it because it really ends up being a huge, 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 huge blessing. It really, really is. So that was my intention today is to come here and to share this wisdom with you all. I have a multitude of uh, downloads that I've been receiving lately, but some of them I just know have to come with divine timing and some of them have layers to them that even though I received the initial start or the middle part of that download, there's going to be other parts of it that need to be added on that haven't yet been received by me. So I just take my time with it. So if that's something that is speaking to you that you would love to receive in the near future, my YouTube channel here is free. This community is safe. You are supported here. I feel supported here. The love is real here. It's not perfect journey here, but it's real and it's authentic, you know? So um, I invite you to subscribe to the YouTube channel, absolutely. And I'm just really looking forward to, again, like connecting with you guys in the near future. Um, do, I was gonna say, let me know what this winter solstice kind of represents for you. And that's absolutely, if you're willing, if you're willing to do that, if you're willing to share, I would love that. I'm still coming, I'm gonna be actually shuffling and pulling, pulling on that for myself. I've got, for those of you guys that don't know, I love tarot. So I'm gonna be looking into that, but, um, and seeing what my guides say through the tarot cards. But I think more importantly than that is your relationship with that question and your relationship with the winter solstice. And that's something that I think is a wonderful tool for the winter solstice is actually to keep a journal and to keep documenting, keep keeping records um, of the things that you're processing, the things that you're feeling and what's coming up for you. It's very, very powerful. Especially looking back, you'll just be like, wow, the wisdom that I had then, the wisdom I have now, it's really, it's really um, unmatched by many things, okay? So I'm sending you guys all of my love.